Welcome back guys, this is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, let's take a tour of the shack. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So recently, I took the time and effort to rebuild uh, basically everything that you see behind me. And I put that uh, rebuild video over on Patreon. And those guys said they were pretty interested in seeing a tour of exactly what I had going on behind me. So let me bring you guys in a little bit closer and show you what I've got going on. Okay, so let's start over on what would be the right-hand side if I'm sitting at the desk. This is just a little bracket that I built. Uh, it, it's got some standoffs to it and then a small strip of metal that allows me to clip the HTs to it and just kind of gives them a good place to hang out so that they're out of the way. So starting up on the top, just a picture of me and my granddaughter. Next to that, I keep uh, all of the batteries that I may want to grab uh, going out portable. So I've got the Dakota Lithium up there. Uh, at right now, I think there's just one 8 amp hour Miati. And then the one on the left is the 16 amp hour Miati. And then, of course, we need a clock uh, to make sure that we know what time it is when we're operating. So that's uh, sitting there. Then off to the left of that, just a few things. I've got the mug that the ARRL sent me. I've got a couple of HT chargers back here behind it. So one for the uh, FT65 and then another for the FT3DR. And then uh, I've got my little mascot. Can't remember where I got this little pig, but someone gave it to me. I don't know. I just kind of thought he was cool. So he sits up there to be the mascot. Let's go ahead and take a look at the radios. Okay, so we'll just start from right to left. Uh, you've got the new Raspberry Pi that I just finished building on the channel. That's going to sit right here, and every other Raspberry Pi in the shack connects to this Raspberry Pi's hotspot. So it's sending out its hotspot, and then it's also connected to a, uh, a mesh node that's mounted behind this uh, shelving unit. Uh, to give it Cat5 access to the internet. This is just a spare mesh node that I've got sitting down here underneath it. Now, just to the left of that, uh, we've got the Yezu 891 with a Raspberry Pi on top. That system uh, is typically always monitoring JSA call. So that's its primary purpose in life. Now keep in mind though, guys, anything you see here, well, almost anything you see here today uh, is ready to go portable. Let's slide you guys over just a little bit. The radio you see uh, next to the 891 is a Yezu 2980R, uh, and this is the APRS Digipeter that's always running here. So an older Raspberry Pi 3 sitting on top. I'm using the signal link for the sound card interface, and then I've got that radio set, I believe, on its... Uh, not not the highest power, but one level below it. So I believe it's putting out uh, 35 watts uh, on a regular basis, if I can remember that correctly. Now, just to the left of that, you will see this radio here. This is the crossband uh, repeater that I've built to use at Deer Camp. But when we're not uh, when we're not utilizing uh, this during deer season, I just bring it here and leave it sitting uh, here in the shack. Uh, so it is already programmed and ready to go. If uh, I do want to use it, uh, there is a little Balfang radio sitting back here that is pre-programmed to work. Uh, with this pro, uh, crossband repeater. So it's as easy as turning this one on and grabbing the HT and you're ready to go. Uh, next to it is a little, I'm not sure how to pronounce this radio, Wantai maybe. Uh, I'll leave it here across the screen, but it's the JT6188 Plus. 
I've had this thing for like four or five years. I call it a Baofeng on steroids because uh, it puts out 20 or 25 watts, I believe, on VHF and then about 15 watts on UHF. I simply use this on uh, local repeaters. Now, one thing about this, these three radios, uh, this one on the left, the uh, crossband repeater in the middle, and the APRS station, are all connected to the same antenna through an antenna switch. So depending on which one I'm using, uh, I just have to turn the others off and then uh, power up the radio that I do want to use. Primarily, this sits here, I'm going to say 98% of the time, this just sits here uh, with the APRS system running. Occasionally during severe weather, I may shut the APRS system down if I need to monitor additional um, uh, additional repeaters in my area. I'll uh, a lot of times turn on the Wantai radio and just use it to receive. Just to the left of the Wantai uh, radio is the power supply. And this is the only power supply that I am currently using. Uh, this feeds into a rig runner that is mounted on the back of the shelving unit, uh, which distributes power out to everything else. I keep a cable up here that I made up ages ago. Uh, it's got banana plugs on this end, so I can plug in here, power poles on the other. So if I wanna set a piece of test equipment up here or, or test a radio or just hook something up temporarily, I do have that power available to me. Now, let's talk about power here for a second because I've got one 30 amp power supply running everything that you've seen, uh, or well, everything that's sitting on this desk. So I do have to be a bit cautious with that, not to overload that power supply. Then sitting on the actual desk, I've got the 857 on the left-hand side with a Raspberry Pi attached to it. You can't see the Raspberry Pi, but it's right behind the uh, Amateur Radio Active uh, logo. Uh, and the purpose of this radio right now is to drive the Winlink gateway that I do run here at the house. Uh, eventually, I'm probably going to purchase another 2980 and put it down there in place of the 857, but for the time being, it's the 857 that's running it. Just to the right of that, uh, we've got the uh, tablet. That's the uh, Amazon Fire tablet. Uh, there is a keyboard there, and then there is a mouse, uh, and those just give me the ability to sit down here and work digital modes if I want to. Typically, I don't uh, use the tablet when I'm in the shack. More times than not, I'm going to be using my primary workstation, which is on the other side of the room. Uh, that's my Mac Mini, uh, where I do the vast majority of the work. Every one of the Raspberry Pis over here, I am able to VNC into uh, if I need access to any of these Raspberry Pis. But I do have the availability to use the tablet here as well. Over in the far right corner, uh, it's a little difficult to see. I'm going to reach back here. This guy here is just a USB power, uh, power port. It allows me, when I come in from the field, to be able to plug up uh, at least six devices or up to six devices and get everything uh, charging at one time. So maybe that is uh, the tablet and the keyboard that need to be charged. Anything else that I depleted batteries on or at least used part of them while I was in the field, I can come back in and charge real quick. The only other thing laying over here, and this just kind of hangs out here most of the time, it's uh, one of the older fold-up keyboards that I had and a little phone holder. So those items just kind of hang out there if I need them, uh, if I want to hook up my phone and use a keyboard for it. Now, the only thing that I didn't mention uh, in this particular setup is the 817. Uh, it is typically sitting right over beside uh, my Mac at my main workstation. So I use it uh, for my primary means of communication on local repeaters uh, and around the area locally. I also use it to check uh, Winlink email through a two meter packet gateway 
uh, pretty much every single morning. So that kind of gives you an idea of what uh, I've got going on here. Uh, by the way, before I forget it, big shout out to uh, Good Game Ham Radio for the t-shirt that he sent up. Uh, you guys be sure to check him out. I'll try to remember to leave a link somewhere up here uh, to his channel. If you don't follow Good Game Ham Radio, be sure to check him out and give him a subscribe. All right, guys, I appreciate your views as always. Be sure to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. We'll see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.